bless you this morning. We praise you. We honor you. We give glory to your name. For you are an awesome God. You are great and you are mighty. Oh God, we adore you. We love you. We exalt you. And we bless your holy name. And Father, as I stand this morning before your precious people, Lord, I stand as a yielded vessel that you will work your will in and through me, that I will be the instrument that you will speak to you today. Have your way, have your way. Rain down fresh Holy Ghost fire on us today, God. Be exalted in us. And as your word go forth, we thank you that it will accomplish all that pleases you. Burdens will be removed. Yokes will be destroyed. Your people will be delivered and set free. We thank you in advance, oh God, for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit in this house today. For a mighty move of the Holy Spirit as your word go out over the airways today. Lord, we thank you in advance. We'll shout in the victory and we call it done in the matchless name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, come on, I can't hear you. All of God's people said, oh, I want to hear you this morning. All of God's people said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All oh, church, he's worthy this morning. He's worthy to be praised. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. That's the reason right there to give him the glory and the honor and the praise that he is so worthy of. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And God is raining down on us a fresh anointing today. Glory to God. Holy Ghost fire. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to remain standing as I read the scripture. Turn with me to 2 Peter, the first chapter, verse 3. 2 Peter, the first chapter, verse 3. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost fire. My Lord. Truly, God is in the house. Hallelujah. The anointing is here. Glory to God. Second Peter, the first chapter, verse 3. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. The title of today's message, the Holy Spirit baptizes. The Holy Spirit baptizes. And you might have your seats. Oh, God is so good. Can you just feel his presence in the house today? The Holy Spirit baptizes. Throughout the Bible, we see God's unconditional love. He sent Jesus. Jesus died on the cross and paid our sin debt, which opened up the door for salvation to bring us back to God. But he didn't stop there. He knew that we would need help to live the supernatural life that he called us to. So he's speaking to us this morning out of uh, 2 Peter 1 and 3, as he said, here's what I'm going to do. It's going to be my, by my divine, divine, divine power. It's going to be by my divine power that I'm going to give them everything that they need that pertaineth unto life and godliness. Everything that they need that pertaineth unto life and godliness so that they can walk in victory, overcomers, and be successful in this life. God's unconditional love. He loved us so much that 
when Jesus was getting ready to go back to the Father, and they were concerned in John, the 14th chapter, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to ask the Father, and he will send you another comforter. In other words, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. So we are teaching on seven of the benefits that you have through the shedded blood of Jesus and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. We are on benefit number four today. The Holy Spirit baptized. There are three baptisms that we all need to experience. Three baptisms. So I want you to pay close attention to this, and I want you to listen to the verbiage of the three baptisms that we all need to experience. The first baptism is the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. The second baptism, the disciples baptize in water. The disciples baptize in water. And the third baptism is Jesus baptized us with the Holy Spirit. So the first baptism is the Holy Spirit is going to baptize you into the body of Christ. The second baptismal is the disciples are going to baptize you in water. And the third is Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at these individually. Number one, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. Now this could possibly be the first time that you've heard teaching on the baptism like this. So I wanna back everything up with scripture. The Holy Spirit baptized us into the body of Christ. First Corinthians 12 and 13. Scriptures are posted for your convenience. But we're only going to read the first part of that verse. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. By one spirit. What spirit do you think that is? That's the Holy Spirit. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. What body is that? We are the body of Christ. So we are baptized, one spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the body of Christ. That's into Jesus. So if anyone asks you, have you been baptized? You can tell them yes. Because if you're in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit have baptized you into the body. How many of you? As the appeal went forward, as a preacher or teacher or whoever was standing and giving the word, made the appeal for salvation. And they said, if you have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now. And as you were sitting there, there was an unction, there was a prompting in your spirit to give your heart to God. That was the Holy Spirit that was prompting your spirit to baptize you into the body of Christ. So what did you do? You transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You left the old man and you put on the new. You were transformed into the body of Christ, into new life in Christ. Hallelujah. That's exciting. First baptism is that you are baptized, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. And the second baptism 
is that you are baptized into water. Holy Spirit baptize you into the body. Baptism in water, you are baptized in water. A brief definition of baptism is you're immersed. You're completely wet. Matthew 28, verse 19, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples. And he said, go therefore and make disciples of all men, all nations, and baptize them. That's water baptism. Baptizing and immersing you in water. You're getting completely wet. So what are you doing when you're being baptized in water? Can I go to heaven if I'm not baptized in water? Yes, you can. You baptize into the body. But now, when you are baptized into water, you're identifying with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You're identifying with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So when you come into the body of Christ and you are being baptized, in essence, you're saying the old man is going down into the water and he's dying and I'm buried and I'm leaving him there and I'm rising to new life in Christ. That's what you're doing. You're identifying who you are with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what it's symbolic of. Taking off the old and putting on the new. You're making a statement. You're letting the world know, here is where I stand. I'm in the body of Christ. I put off the old and I put on the new. Hallelujah. That's good news. Symbolizing my new life in Christ. An outward sign of an inward reality is what took place on the inside when you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're baptized. That's very important. We're in the body of Christ. We have been baptized into his body. And we have identified with him. We have now been immersed in water. We've taken off the old and put on the new. Hallelujah. But still there is more. Because God knew in his infinite wisdom that even though we are in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit has brought us and baptized us into the body. And we've identified with him. There's still more that we need in order to live an overcoming life. In order to live the supernatural life that God has called us to. And in, the, in Second Peter, he said he was going to give us everything everything so we don't have everything yet we're in the body water baptism but we need more we need to be empowered you can't do this in and of yourself the word of God says in me in my weakness I'm made strong and that strength is coming in through the empowerment that you have on the inside of you so God in his infinite wisdom he said when my son come back Hallelujah. Jesus have already told him he's not going to leave him alone. So when he's getting ready to leave on that third, getting ready to go back to the father. Jesus told him, he said, here is what I need you to do. The Holy Spirit can't come until I leave. I must go back to the father for the Holy Spirit to come. You see, before Jesus came, the Holy Spirit came upon men. It didn't indwell them. Now, there's a few that was indwelled before Jesus came. Overall, it didn't indwell them. It came upon them. And then it would leave them, okay? When David messed up, the spirit was no longer with him. And David cried out to God. He said, do not take your spirit away from me. David knew the importance of the Holy Spirit. Saul had the spirit upon him until he disobeyed God and it said then the spirit left. So in the Old Testament came up on men. When Jesus was here, the anointing our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ was here with them, upon them, in the midst. But Jesus is leaving. 
So now he's sending us a comfort. When Jesus was with us, only a few could be in his presence at one time. But he's saying, I'm going to go to the Father. I've been with you. But what I'm going to do now is the Holy Spirit is going to come and the Holy Spirit is going to indwell you. He will be with you. In other words, all of us at the same time have the Holy Spirit with us, moving and working on the inside of us. Hallelujah. That's good news today, church. That is good news. So Jesus said when he was getting ready to leave, he told him in Acts, the first chapter, beginning around the fourth verse, he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back to Jerusalem and I want you to wait for the promise. What was the promise? Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Wait for the promise. He said, you have heard from me. John truly baptized you with the water and that's good, hallelujah. But you shall be baptized with, W-I-T-H, with the Holy Spirit, not many days after. Acts, the second chapter, it says they all gathered in the upper room. I believe it was somewhere around 120,000 gathered in the upper room. And they are waiting on the Holy Spirit. How many of you know when you have a promise from God, sometimes you have to wait? Yeah. It don't come overnight, you have to wait. It might take years to come, but if you stay in faith and you wait, that whatever God promised you shall come to pass. Because he said is yea and is amen. So they were in the upper room and it says they were interceding and they were praising and they were praying. And it said there came a strong wind. It was like a windstorm. Have you ever seen a windstorm? And you know how that wind just comes through and it hit everything that's in its way. It said it was like a strong, rushing, mighty wind. And that it was upon all of them. And they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave utterance. And I can just imagine, I want you to take this journey with me. That they were all excited. They was praising God. Hallelujah. They've been filled with the precious Holy Spirit. And they left the upper room and they're all out in the streets. And the word of God says that they were praising and thanking God for his goodness and worship him. And worshiping him. But they were doing it in other languages. The Jews was there, there was some who were speaking their language. The Hebrews were there, they would speak, some were speaking in that language. The Philistines, the Philistines was there, were used in that language. The Gentiles was there. You know, we can say it like this. They were speaking uh, English, Spanish, Greek. They were over there with the uh, Ukrainians speaking their language and on and on. They were all praising God in these languages and all the people there in Jerusalem was from all over from all of these different lands and the people came because oh they was making a lot of noise see God is not nervous when you get loud God is not nervous when you raise your voice and you says go shouting hallelujah hallelujah he's not nervous now say don't get nervous but God is not nervous so they were loud and boisterous and people came from all around to see what was going on and they heard them praising God in their language Spanish French English over in Africa and over and over and the Jews the leaders was there and all of these other people from all over came and they are looking look at this what's going on here one said, man, I don't have a clue what these folks is doing. But there's something going on here. Because do you hear them? They speaking in my language. 
they speaking in that language and that language. So everybody there was able to understand just what was going on because every language was there. So they knew that they were praising God for his goodness, praising God for what he had already done. So they were sitting, standing around and looking and said, what do you make of this? I don't know what to think of all of this. Then they had some that was poking fun and mocking, you know, and laughing. You know how when God is working with you and people don't understand you, how they'll make fun of you and they'll say you're stupid and crazy, you're drunk and on and on. So they had some that said, they just drunk. They done got drunk. They showing out. That's all it is. They ain't nothing to be concerned about. After the Holy Spirit is with you, in you, you are now empowered. You're no longer that coward. Peter no longer the one that denied Jesus three times and cursed third time because he was concerned for his own life. The other disciples are no longer locked in a room, afraid and hiding. But there's a boldness. There's a confidence. There's an assurance that the, what God and Jesus have told them, you are to go forth and what you're to do. And Peter stood up. And I'm going to put it in my words. Peter stood up and he said, wait a minute. Hold on just a minute. Give me your undivided attention. You need to hear what I have to say to you today. You're saying that they are drunk. No, they're not. They're not drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. What's open for them to get some alcohol at nine o'clock in the morning? These men are not drunk. Some of you want to make fun of them, but that's okay. But let me tell you what's going on here. You need to know what's going on. You see, my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, the one y'all crucified, the one y'all hung on the cross, the one y'all lied on, and then you put him on the cross, you crucified him, and he died and he was buried. But the word of God says that the grave couldn't hold him. God didn't leave him in the grave. It said that his body did not decay. The grave could not hold him down. He said, this that I'm telling you about is what Joel prophet about back in the Old Testament. And this is what David talked about when David was rejoicing. David was not talking about himself, but he was prophesied about our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that's going to come and going to deliver his people. That's what he said. See, David, they thought David might have been talking about himself because David said, I know the Lord is always with me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken. Oh, that's good news right there. See, when you know God is always with you, regardless of what's going on in your life, you don't have to be moved. You don't have to be shaken because you have a promise from God. And the promise here is that God, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, was going back to the Father and send the Holy Spirit. That's the promise. And he was going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. David said, I don't have to be shaken by nothing that's going on because I have a promise from God. And he talked about how he would rejoice. He said, my heart is filled with joy. I will rejoice. The grave couldn't hold him. Hallelujah. David was prophesied into the future. He wasn't talking about him, but he was talking about what was going to happen and what was to come. That's good news. The long-awaited promise of the Holy Spirit is now here. Hallelujah. And it's with you and it's in you. And guess what? It's not there just for the sake of being there. It's there to do a work in your life. He filled you with the Holy Spirit. And he told you to go. Share the good news. Minister to the lost. The harvest is ripe and the labors are few. Now you've been filled, what are you doing? What are you doing? What you doing? Are you sitting down on God? Are you using what God put in you? Well, you know, I'm going to get around to that. I know God called me to do that, but right now I'm, I'm just, I have a lot to do. I just really can't do it. 
I'm going to get to it, though. I'm going to get around to it. You know, I'm going to see what I can do. I got a lot on my schedule. I got to free up some of this stuff. And I, I just cannot get enough rest. I'm just so tired all the time. I'm preaching about me now. God have not accepted any of our excuses. Just like the three servants that he gave talents to. And one took the talent and hid it and came with the excuses. His master did not accept it. Our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ is not accepting our excuses. God has empowered you with the precious Holy Spirit. Get a revelation. That same power that raised up Jesus from the dead, it dwells in us. That same power, think about the power that it took to get Jesus up out of the grave. And it says that same power, hallelujah, is dwelling on the inside of you and it's on the inside of me. But God did not give us that power for us to sit down on him. We are to be about our father's business. It gives you the boldness. It gives you what you need. See, we've been studying on the Holy Spirit, and it's indwelling you. And guess what it says? The Holy Spirit speaks to us, teaches us, guides us, comforts us. And then it empowers you. So what do you need all that power for? You need that power to do what God has called you to do. You need that power to walk in boldness and minister to the lost and to the hurting. You need that power to get on your walking shoes and get out and go and tell somebody about the goodness of God. You need that power to minister to the lost and to the hurting. The Holy Ghost power is with you and it's in you. That brings us back to Ephesians 3 and 20, our theme for the year. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all your little finite mind can think or ask. And how are we going to do all of that is through the Holy Spirit with you in you that's empowering you to do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. It's something about the Holy Spirit. It's something about the power that you have. It's something about God making you a giant, even though you might be small in statue. But what he has put on the inside of you is bigger than what's showing up on the outside. He put in you everything, everything that you need for life and godliness. Everything you need to bring the promise to pass, the vision, the dreams, the goals that he put in your heart. Everything you need, he put it in you to bring it to pass. Oh, it's hard. Yes. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's difficult. You're going to burn some midnight oil. You're going to be up late at night and early in the morning. There'll be a whole lot of things people will get to do that you won't get to do because you're being about your father's business. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let us, let us be about our father's business. You're baptized into the body. You're in it. If you haven't been immersed in water, you can be. And you, Jesus himself, have baptized you with and in the Holy Spirit. And you're empowered to do a work. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Do you accept it? Thank you, Lord. If you are here today. And you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you that opportunity right now to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. 
the Holy Spirit, the empowerment that we're speaking about today is available to you, but it starts with salvation. Hallelujah. So if you're here, if you're watching via live streaming, I want to give you that opportunity. This is your day of salvation. And it all starts with you accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So if that's you that I'm talking to, I want you to give me your undivided attention and pray the sinner's prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and he rose on the third day. Seated at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for me. Come into my heart and save me now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Hallelujah. Those words that you just spoke out of your mouth, if you believe them in your heart, you are now saved. Let me be the first to welcome you to the body of Christ. All the angels are rejoicing over the decision that you've made. And we want to enjoy, rejoice with you. So if you're ever in the Aurora, Naperville area, come and share your testimony. And let us rejoice with you. Hallelujah. And if you are here in the sanctuary and you have not made that commitment, you can do so right now. Just wave your, raise your hand. We'll lead you to Christ. This is where it all begins. Hallelujah. We see there are all believers in the house. Hallelujah. And at this time, our assistant pastor will come. Our pastor just preached the word of the Holy Spirit. She just gave us a powerful message. We encourage you to meditate that message. Get it in your spirit. Go back look at it once it's posted online and know that we have everything that we need we are empowered to do a powerful work hallelujah if there's someone here that needs prayer or if you'd like to receive the baptism of the holy spirit now is the appointed time just wave at us you can come down front if you want to receive prayer or baptism of the holy spirit now is the appointed time closing the service without giving you that opportunity. So there's none, but yet there is room. If you're here and you'd like to be a part of this ministry, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. We promise to love you unconditionally and teach you God's word. If you're watching me via live stream, and you'd like to join this ministry, go to our website, loveofchristworshipcenter.org and follow the simple instructions where it says membership. We'd love to have you as a part of this membership. Again, we promise to love you unconditionally and teach you God's word. Amen. Amen. And we see there are none, yet there is always one. We're so happy that you're here and seeing the word of God. For those that are here on site, before you leave, if you'd like to give your tithes and offerings, please do so in the offering basket to my right and your left. And we thank you for your giving. We thank you for supporting this ministry. For those of you watching us via live stream, thank you for your continued support and contributions. If you'd like to continue to give and support this ministry, please go to our website which is loveofchristworshipcenter.org. Visit the tab that says giving and follow the simple instructions. If you'd like to text to give, text the word give, G-I-V-E, to 708-377-2911.
that follow the simple instructions. And we want to say again, thank you for your continued support. And we decree the seeds that you sow back into your lives a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, we just speak blessings to you. Amen. Well, let us stand.